Okay. Alright. Hey everybody, the Reese Viral here, and welcome back to more of Planescape Torment. Okay. Right, just put me phone away. I only use that to see that the tweet went out. Basically, it's all I use it for. Oh, righty. So, I can't remember what we last got. We got like a mission to get, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's somebody. It's essentially the guy that is all about neutrality. If I remember rightly. Oh, I know where he is. Yeah. And, ba-boom. Black Rose. I've made a save, so it should be okay. Is he, like, misty? So, Black Rose. This man moves with frightening speed. He seems only half there. His eyes burn out... Wait, his eyes burn out of his haze, and their madness pierces your heart. You. His voice is like a blast of cold air. Declare your allegiance. Do you hold for good or evil? Ah, so that's... Okay. Um, good alignment. Evil alignment. Neutral. I believe in Aiden though is less fortunate than myself. I choose good. There is a man named Rotten William. He is a dark and deceitful man. He is a leader of the Dark Alley Shivs. Find him in this alley and slay him. And you will serve the cause of goodness. Fail and evil shall rise. Refuse and I shall slay you. Rotten William is already dead. Your next task is to slay Crystal, leader of the Razor Angels. Balance requires her death. I'll be back. I await you. Go. Now. I have some questions first. There are no answers. There is only action. Go. In knowing the teachings hey. of Zerthamon, I have become stronger. In no other teachers of Zerthamon. Oh, nice, he got five hit, hit points. And I found my accent's like properly coming through. Got five hit points added. Ten. Hot damn, Mart. They also have literally no XP by comparison. It's crazy. What level are they compared? Level five. Level five. Level four. What? Oh, hang on. Uh, never mind. They only have so little XP. Because they are, they were a level below. Ah, oh, shite. This sucks. Mostly because if I want to kill Crystal, I have to kill all of the Razor Angels, which is gonna be a bitch. Ah, oh, quick saved. That's what that is. Oh. <laughs> Wait, so what does that go under? Oh, no, no, no. So I go save. Uh. Oh my god, I wish I knew that. It's Q. Well. <laughs> Learn something new every day. I meant to press A to bring up the attack cursor. Oh god. Right, let's do this. Sorry, but balance requires me to do this. I apologize. Who got hurt? Oh, Mod did. They're not that bad, to be honest. I mean, I'm saying this, but I'm only attacking, you know, three of them. As soon as I'm, you know, wanted by all of them, that's when things are gonna change. Shit. Right. If I, can, if I can draw them to me, I don't want everybody after me. Just look natural. Uh, casual. Casual. Damn. Damn it. Come on, guys, like, we just. <laughs> wait till he gets in the middle of us and then we just basically mug him. My god. Just wait. I want to draw out a bunch, but I don't want to go after all of them at once because that would be foolish. And suicidal. Oh, nice. Plot charm. And some coppers. The only downside is I forfeit my 1,000 coppers. Right, reward. <laughs> Holy bloody hell, there's loads. Alright, this guy's coming after us. All's good, all's good. Slowly but surely. Oh my god. I mean, I'm getting some coppers from, from them, but it's not much. Righty. Come on, who's next? Three of them? Wait. Run away. There we go, they're still coming. Good. Oh man. I'm like trying to click them, but I'm just running around them. Very nice. Okay, this they aren't that bad. 
In all fairness, I think I had a, a harder time with the Dark Alley ships than I do with these guys. Yeah, hang on. I want to run down here so I don't get hit by all of them. I was going to say, I love how everybody's missing. Another bloody dagger. Bronze bollocks. It doesn't really matter. Uh, select everybody. I'm gone. So how many are left? There's these two. There is crystal too. There we go. Go 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 There we go. God, just do them a little bit at a time. It's surprising how well this works. Shit. Yeah, they auto attack. It's all good. What? No, 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 no. God, what am I doing? <laughs> I attacked Mark. Oh my god, that was so stupid. I didn't even realize you could attack your party members. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, why is that a thing? Done. That's a feature that just should not be a feature. Wait, can I quick save when they are not in my line of sight? Oh my god, I can. That's brilliant. Well, it's just going to be one Razor Angel and then what's her face? The weird thing is, they're not wanting walking towards us. Just go for it. There we go. Ten coppers. Holy... I've got the enhanced edition which probably adds that. Okay. This was to do with a quick fix. I was looking on the wiki about it because I was trying to decide whether I wanted to go with the side of neutrality or the side of good. It doesn't actually have any sort of effect on your alignment, I don't think, if you kill Crystal. I'm pretty sure the only thing that adjusts your alignment is the initial um, dialogue choice that you make, so if you choose the side of, e the side of evil, it puts you further towards um, an evil alignment and if you choose you're with the side of good then it puts you further towards the um good alignment however what i noticed was if you choose to kill crystal after agreeing to kill black black rose i can't remember if that's what it's called essentially you forfeit the well, the one little little the, the 1000 coppers but because of a quick um a fix somebody made i think it was just for the or original because there was a bunch of like patches you could apply to the original game and this was one of them it was essentially if somebody had like offered you a monetary reward essentially that money gets placed on their person so that if you do kill them they will just drop the money instead so in that in that case you don't lose out on anything it's honestly quite a it's it's a really good fix and one that should have been in the base game to be honest wait why is what's his face not coming with us all right cool we're not quite done with this place either like we've dealt with the conflict have you slain Crystal? Yes. Oh, here we go. And this is why I wanted to go with this, because this is really cool. So we establish our philosophies now. A contest of arms, the winner is the true victor in our struggle for the truth. So I'll do it, but I cannot die. You will lose, eventually. His eyes widen. You are eternal. Your truth is eternal. I salute you. You honor me. Farewell. There we are. Boom. And there he is. Black Rose is an interesting character. He's like a spectre. And that just makes him all the more interesting. By the way, yeah, there's still a few things to do. There's like a charred out building that you can go inside. And there's also a chapel over here that you can go inside to. I, I, I can't remember how, but I know that you can go inside them. It might be just from down here, actually. Yeah. Luckily, I don't need to worry about being attacked. Can I open this? Or do I still need a lockpick? Or whatever. Their yeah, container's locked. Move there. There Wait, so how do I go in here? Yeah, the old singe building. Oh, here we go. That's how I get in. It's all the way over to the right. Ta da! Oh, hang on. Wait, so where could I. I can go here, but that's it. 
This is really weird, because it's like I can't... I can click, but I can't click. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in here. Whereabouts is it? If I go on the map, what's it say? Yeah, the ruined cathedral. And there's a tent. And the burnt building. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. That's the southwestern portion of the hive. I'll try the burnt building first, then. Because for some reason, this one doesn't seem to be working. I mean, it's, it's letting me inside it. It's just there's no people inside of it. And that's not the way it's meant to be. Wait, I can go inside the tent. Hold up. I didn't know this would actually take me to, like, a different place. Oh. You seem to have startled her. She abruptly stops rummaging through the tent and stares at you nervously. Greetings. I wasn't doing nothing, I swear is it. Why don't you tell me what you weren't doing? She looks at you as if about to tell you something, then she quickly dashes for the door. Stop. Uh, oh, she ran. I don't want to kill her or anything. Oh my god, where did you go? Oh, there's a door here. That's probably what I'd missed. And now we'll enter the cathedral. There it is. Aeola. Oh, okay. Oop, ha uh ha. -huh. We got some junk. Wait, what? My inventory's full. Are you kidding? What's the word, Chief? Sure, why not? <laughs> sure, why not? You're already carrying junk. Perfect. Right, so everybody. Right, let's talk to Aeola. Welcome to the to the cathedral of Aeoscar. Or Aeos. I don't know how you say that. Have you come to worship uh, Aeoscar? With me, you can be his second disciple. Why are there no other disciples of that person? Over the years, I have met, I have had many disciples. Unfortunately, they have all disappeared. It's quite frustrating, actually. As soon as they become initiates, I never see them again. Lately, there's been a rumor going around that the lady herself is the cause. Now no one comes by anymore. You are the first soul I've seen stop by in a while. Oh. I do remember reading about this. Yeah. That's cool. It's it. The thing is, I'm just like, hmm. So tell me more about them. Aeola's voice takes on a t on a tone of adulation. Aeoscar is the keeper of gateways. Within Aeoscar lies the power of portals, doorways, and opportunity. Sigil, also known as the City of Doors, used to be the home of Aeoscar, until he was cast out by that cursed lady. Now there are few worshippers of. Aeoscar here because the lady forbids it. That will soon change, however, as I help the people to see the greatness of Aeoscar. She cannot stand against the will of the people. The lady, I have no wish to cross her. I best be on my way. Farewell. You can join, and I think I will. I'm I'll gone. make a quick save before I do, just to be on the safe, safe side. But yeah, I, do, I, I would like to join, because it would be interesting. And also the fact that you get trapped in a maze because it pisses off the lady. And obviously, if you piss off the lady, she traps you in a maze. It's cool. But that's why I want to give it a go. Oh, wow. Mage in training. Bra ka da. Oh, bra. So, rock. You see a young man dressed in plain but well kept clothes. He pauses in his pacing as you approach. Greetings. Rock is in, rock in trouble. Big. Help you do? What's wrong? Rock forgets rings in tent. Friends need to magic with. No rings, be mad at Rock. One ring brown like jink. Other shiny like mirror. Last is pretty in yellow. Ring for Rock? I'll bring them back for you, Rock. My journal. Is that in that tent where that woman was? Oh no. I shouldn't have gone in there first. Hmm. It must just be this tent. Okay. But the question is, where? Because the thing is, with this place I don't see any... You know, anything I can loot. Unless it's just the other tents. Hmm. Crew shelter of makeshift materials. Alright. No. Oh, oh, I can enter them. Okay. Although I'm su surprised there's not any in there. Either way. Gamlin.
Hey, what are you doing in my hen- uh, in my hen- in my tent? I'm searching for Rock's tent. Do you know where it is? Blast, you another friend of Rock's? Yeah, this is one of the tents he calls home. As you can see, those ones follow up. Go to one of his other tents. Farewell. Yeah, you're a friend of Rock's and I'm a friend of Rock's. So what? Doesn't mean I have to talk to you. Farewell then. Okay. Hmm. So where are- there's so many tents. One of them had a hive dweller, and the woman ran away. I was wondering if I could go in this. No, this is just one of... Okay. There are tents literally everywhere. I didn't realise there were so many. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's nothing in here. Right, so that's the one I've just been in. Trying to find a tent that's actually open is the hardest part. Or like one that's got a a doorway. Hmm. I'm gonna say there's also down here, but this just leads to the southwest. Right. Hmm. I would assume that there's a ring in each of the, the tents you can go inside. I wonder if there's actually like a... Done. Oh! Oh! Crap. What's up? God, that's sure, why not? really weird. Right there. Select everybody. So there's one. Okay. So this one's another one I can go inside. Ugh. Okay, it's not there. Oh my god, they're it. They're in such interesting places. Because if you quite literally just glanced around, you wouldn't spot them. That's clever. No, so the only other one is the other tent I can go inside. All right. Which is... I can't remember... this one. Right, cool. Alright. I don't even know if this is all that good to do. Like, I don't know if it's that rewarding. Oh, I wondered what the hell happened then. So where's this one? I'm going. Wow. I keep forgetting. Huh? Eh? Okay. Okay. There we go. Boom. I really hope I don't need to have them on uh, the nameless ones person in order to give them to him because that would suck because that would mean I'd have to switch a bunch of shit out and the worst part is I'd have to switch out a bronze ring for another bronze ring I'm like hmm <laughs> yeah just take them away from Mort please All right. now ah, there we go did you bring yes I got all the rings here yay you new friend of Rock now. Rock take rings now. Rock thanks new friends. Okay, Farewell, Rock. Ah! Friend's going to be mad at Rock. Oh dear. Masters, Rock has the rings. Then let us begin. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Bra. Ka. Da. Ahem. <clears throat> Oops. Okay. Oh dear. We did it! Uh-oh. Oh no! <laughs> Lim Lim! Slaughtered fire- it just killed them all. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. That's brilliant. So you see what appears to be an ordinary Lim Lim. It's hard to believe that this cute little creature slaughtered five wizard apprentice, or apprentices with such ease. Leave it alone, I'm not kicking the bloody thing. It'll kill me then. Oh my. We got a gaudy ring. God, who could pick these up? Endure. In enduring grow strong. What? Actually, I can pick up the clock charm. 
chief. What's up, chief? All right, that's a lot of stuff. Good as done. So what's in here? Junk. God, just what I want it. But what happened? That was like a trap or something. That was weird. Ooh. Don't know why I'm so obsessed with like looting these things. More junk. What else? Oh, they are trapped. Okay. Well, that explains why he got hit with something. I'm just looking around as to where something. Oh, there's the other. Oh, there's nothing in that one. But it was still trapped. I've got of course it was. You penis. Just double checking. I don't know why it's that big a deal. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's a go. What? Oh, there's the exit. Of course, of all the places. I like how the Lim Lim killed everybody but Rock. All right. So it's like Rock was his friend. It did not like the apprentices, that's for sure. Where's the... There it is. I'll say, where's the bloody door? Okay. Right, should I do this? This is either going to be great or terrible. Right, quick save, just in case I do not like how this plays. Or just in case I don't like this. Wait. Hmm? Wait, so what congregation? The only people I see here are you. Over the years, oh right, I see. I'm not afraid. I wish to become a disciple. Here we go. Wonderful, it's been so long since the last person asked. Aeola makes you perform a series of complex rituals and then says, you are now a disciple of Aeoscar. Go now and spread the word of the den to the denizens of Sigil so that all may know the glory of Aeoscar. All right. Oh, well, nothing happened. Well, what do you know? I'm gone. Wait, really? Hold up. Ever, s I'm confused. No, I don't have any spells, so nothing has changed. Interesting. It definitely should have, unless they changed it. Oh, oh no, that was because of Mark. You have returned. Here's my surprise, it is just that you're the first disciple to ever return. Most seem to disappear, how may I help you? Tell me more. So why are there no other disciples? Huh. Weird. It didn't... teleport me. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna complain, but... I was more than prepared. But more to the point, I was expecting to get, you know, charted away, but it never happened. Huh. Yeah, I'm surprised. Oh man. To be fair, the maids is a very short thing. Here we go. Never mind. Perfect. Alright, there we are. I get teleported away. There we are. What happened to Sigil? It is Sigil. That's such a weird name. I don't like it. Sigil makes more sense. <laughs> oh man, look at this place. Well, I can see a path th over here. Oh man. I'm gone. God, it's so quiet here. This is it. Oh my god. God, this is tense. My god. Jesus. I don't actually think the maze is that much of a big deal. Honestly. The hell is this? Oh. Can I literally just run around the edge of this? Seriously. No, there's even further, like, even further ones. But I like how it looks. Look at this place. To be fair, I know there are enemies here, but I don't know where they are. And I I don't actually know how bad the enemies would be. I mean, it's called a maze, so what do you expect? Let's see, if I go back to... right here, or even if I went back to the middle, 
I'd probably be able to find my way out a bit easier. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Alright. So I could go south. Seems each each path has a branch off of it. Yeah. Where am I going? Oh yeah, I forgot. Where the hell am I going? Oh, I clicked over there. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't even realise. Hmm. So where's this lead? I don't like how silent this place is. It's eerie. Kind of creepy too. Alright. I mean, like, what I'm expecting certain things to, like, not happen. But maybe some of the things I'm expecting were rectified with the Enhanced Edition. I'm not entirely sure. I could have sworn you were meant to fight shadows in here. As far as I can recall. Hmm, whatever. The weird thing is, angering the lady is not even that big a deal. You get a slight punishment, which is a maze. And that's basically it. Right, so I went north, I went south. This is my only other path. Because the other paths led to a dead end. Maybe the right way is where the enemies will be. Who knows? Hmm. I'm still not sure, because I'm not seeing anything. Although the real question is, what happened to Dakon and Mort? Yeah, the fact they just disappeared is a bit strange. I'm only also doing this to just uncover the map. My slight obsession. The fuck? What is that? Hold on. Oh, oh, what the hell? Whoa. Burn. Wait, bone frame journal. Sledgehammer. <gasps> okay. Shoot. Um, bugger. If I actually click this. There we go, I can store them. The rusty daggers aren't worth anything anyway. Nice. Okay, I'm interested in the journal. Holy balls, how good is that? Two to nine. Speed is seven. Yeah, speed is seven, which means it's real slow. Oh my god, it's almost twice as slow as that. By the way, the bone frame journal. I can use it. Okay, this might... Hmm, okay. So this appears to be some sort of journal. Sheets of dried human skin have been stretched across a framework of bone, and strangely enough, it appears the sheets of skin have healed together at the seams, forming the spine of a makeshift book. Looks like the outer sheets of skin form a cover for a series of other skin sheets locked inside the bone frame. A series of symbols have been written in blood across the exterior of the sheets of skin, but you can't make them out. They appear to be some form of writing, but they seem to be written upside down right to left and at odd angles that make your eyes hurt. Despite the crudity of the writing, you admit that the design of the bone frame is actually quite intricate. The bones have been carved so that they snap neatly together. It looks like the bones can be unhooked from each other, allowing the book to be opened and read. Use. Okay. So this appears to be some sort of journal. Sheets of dried human skin have been stretched. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Examine the exterior. Written in blood across... Yes, examine the skin. So the skin looks to be the same palette as yours. Its scarred grey surface reminds you of a zombie's hide, and the pages feel more like cured leather than skin. Examine the frame. Allowing the book to be opened and read. Unlock and open. You unlock the bone frame which unfolds with a neat snap. You open the book and study the pages. They are filled with the same strange series of symbols as were on the exterior cover and they don't seem to make any sense. Try and puzzle out the symbols. Okay, so the symbols don't seem to follow any pattern, at least any that you can see. The angles and pictures, and the pictures displayed, seem to be completely arbitrary. But you can't be absolutely sure. Try and puzzle out again. Okay, so re-hook the bone frame and leave the journal alone. As you re-hook the bone frame, you, you are suddenly struck with a strange thought. That the pages of the interior aren't supposed to make any sense. You, whoever you were at the time, put the symbols there to deceive anyone looking to read the real contents, which are hidden somewhere else in the journal. Here we go. Examine the bone frame. You examine the edge of the frame, and you notice that one of the bones has a hairline fracture around one of its ends. You put your hand over the edge and twist off the top of the bone, revealing a hollow space. Inside the space is a small, rolled-up scrap of skin. 
pull out the skin and read it. The scrap of skin is covered in writing. It looks like someone kept writing over and uh, over it again and again, until it is almost illegible. Nonetheless, you can make out some of the words and some of the symbols. Trapped, trapped ladies will be done. Dodge her gaze. Too many I killed. Too many strangle and kill and stop. The breath in their throats. There's a way out, I know. I know it. Then I'll give the bladed one the laugh. One of the arches holds way out. One of them does. One has the way out. Can't keep going through them one at a time. Maybe, maybe I should go through one. Then walk back to the same portal without. The entry trails off into indecipherable scrolls. For some reason you are feeling that was the last entry. Either the incarnation died in the maze or escaped somehow. Hook the pages back together and put the journal away. Hey! That's cool. I don't know where the hell I... Okay. I think I want to go over this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. But that's quite cool. It seems that was... Wait, isn't each maze unique to the person? Because if it is, then that means that was from one of our previous... Uh, bodies. Or previous incarnations, as the game said. Interesting. Hmm... Righty ho. Okay. I still can't believe how eerie this place is. Ugh. Alrighty. Right, so... I'm just trying to figure out where the hell I can go. I could go back to the middle, I suppose. If nothing works. Yeah, I can't go over to there. I mean, I could. It'd probably just take a while. <laughs> so, wait, what did the journal actually... Does it tell me if I look at the journal? So if I use it, what does it say? Unhook the bomb frame. Trapped. Okay, no way out. One of the arches holds a way out, one of them does. Oh! Go through one portal, then back to another. Okay. The question is, which portal? I'm assuming it would, um, like, light up. There's portals bloody everywhere. No wonder this is a maze. <laughs> the lady is clever. Hmm. Just trying to think where that would be. Where are we? God, we have to go so far. So much for there being shadows, though. Unless it's because it's not the right time. They only come out at night. But this is like a closed off space, so I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, slightly. Either way. So the one thing I'm really curious about is when I leave this place, what happens? Like, do I... Oh, I don't want to say do I lose anything. It's more the fact, is there any sort of punishment? Or not? Okay. So where's the portal? It's none of these. Oh, hang on. Oh! Okay. Hmm. So the portal, it, it teleported me here. I never even thought about just walking through. So what if I tried to do the same again? Yeah, I could probably just... Whoop. So if I walk back through the same portal twice... Would that be the way out? Oh man, I really wish I had like a supersonic speed thing. It's so slow. But I w I w I'll be quite happy when I get back to uh, Sigil. Mostly because then I'll actually have sound. It's not that quiet, but it is quiet. I can barely hear anything. So now what happens if I go through it again? Oh! It puts me at the pole. Uh, not the pole, it puts me at the camp. Weird. Wait, so which one was it? What? It was this one that it teleported me to. 
just curious how this will work. Hmm. I'm just curious if I go through this one, what'll happen? Maybe you need to have both of them activated or something. Oh! So they're linked together. Oh, I've just realised. I think what I can do when I get close to the portal is actually interact with the portal. But instead I just walked straight through it. Where the hell is it? There it is. So I'll just move in front of it. And then we'll see when I get there. That could be why. Oh, huh? Because obviously, the way these seem to work is they just give you like a, not a mirror image. But whichever portal's the opposite of that is what it teleports you to. Mm-hmm. But it seems these are the only ones that actually activate. I was about to say, where am I? We're getting there. Alright, so can I actually interact with the portal this time? It would seem not. Hmm. If I walk back through it, it just does the same. It teleports me here. Okay, I'm very confused. <laughs> Maybe that's the right thing. But then it's just like, which one do I go to? I just walk around, I suppose. So how do I get over to here? Yeah, the, the, okay, the maze is a lot more complicated than I was as assuming. How far can I zoom out? Seems this is a, as far as I can go. So we're there. Go across here. Blah, 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 blah. Wait, will we? Oh, we got it. Oh, no, we will. Up here. Oh my god, to get to that, I need to go around, 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 down. I'm not entirely sure where it's going. Hmm. This is a really cool place, regardless. It's just getting out of here is a bit of a pain. There are shadows! I think they do only show up at certain times though. 6pm. Oh my god, we have music. Oh, it might be combat, but I don't care. Oh, feels good. So where is this leading me? Uh, there'll be a... Is there a path here? No. Um... I was going to say, it seems he doesn't know where he's going. Wait, is that one that's like on its own? Hold the phone. I'm going to go back through this one again. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> it put me back here. Great. Mm-hmm. Weird. We know there are shadows about, but I don't know what the hell happened to it. Yeah, this is kind of confusing me now. So what happens if I go through any other portal? It's just kind of like making me very interested at this point. Okay, it literally just takes me to wherever. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I mean, it could just be the other way around. I go through this one first, and then I go back through it. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe that would take me to the opposite side of the room, which would... No, it wouldn't. If it was to take me to the opposite side of the room, it would be that one. Not that one. But that one is on its own, so I can only assume that's the exit. Oh. Oh no. Kill the thing. Oh my god. Shadows. Oh my god, they give a lot of XP. Not bad. They suck. So that thing was quite literally running after me the entire time. Nice. Alright. Dum 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 Hmm. Oh, there we go. So it was. I did it the. I did it the wrong way around. Okay. Well, whatever. You could probably have done that with any of them. Ah. Oh. They're not gonna say anything. Hey, 
seen you, Chief. No, he didn't. What? Oh man, this is cool. I didn't even. No, I've I've not really spoke to my teammates. So how did you die, Mark? No idea, Chief. I kind of forgot when I died. Can't say I blame myself much. At least there was something waiting for me when after I died. Even if it even if it is life as a floating skull, I mean, it could have been worse. What happened to your body? I don't know, alright? It's just gone. Mock glares at you. But don't think I miss it, because I'm happy just the way I am. And I don't need your half-wit judgments or snide remarks, alright? Okay. Shake a leg. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't mind you tagging along, but is there anything else you can uh, you can do except chatter? Hey, chatter is my best trait. He rattles his teeth for a moment, then grins. Eh? Eh? Oh, that's good to hear. No, but seriously, Chief. I got a knack for chattering in just the right way. I can really bend an ear, if you know what I'm saying. I got insults, back talk, stuff that'll curl someone's ears into their skull, you know? Uh, how was that useful? It's one of my many talents. I call it my litany of curses, you see. Sometimes I can really bend someone's ear with just the right comment. Of course, then I usually have to do a lot of running afterwards, but you get the idea. How does it work? My journal. Oh my god, I never actually spoke to them about these. It's very effective against mages. Well, I can spit insults at someone until they get mad enough to chase me around. It's a non-magical taunt. If the target fails to resist it, they suffer a penalty to their armor class attack. Oh, armor class attacks will do nothing but try to engage more in melee combat. Note that the more insults Mort hears, the better his litany of curses becomes. The litany of curses is very effective against mages. Okay, that might prove useful. So if I speak with Dakon, what is your will? The things I would like to know, Dakon. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I thought there were things I wanted to know. I was wrong. Well, we managed to deal with the maze. So the lady must just punish you once by sending you off to a maze. If you succeed, then she lets you live. Hmm. I mean, why not? It's quite nice, really. Yeah, when you think about it. Alright, so we've finished the the alley of dangerous angles. I keep wanting to, to call it the Alley of Dangerous Angels, but I know that ain't right. Ah, oh, shit. I'm just realising that I'm... Oh, wait, don't matter. I'm, I'm not on my own anymore. Alright, cool. <laughs> Start is for coin. Start is for coin. Alright, All right, we're going to the, 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 the city. Can't to get cut off. Craddock! It's that guy! Oh my god, that's the guy we had to find. Wait, is the... Wasn't there a merchant here? So then there was. Kosajai. So this toothless old crone reeks of fish and brine. Spying your approach, she gives you a wide pink smile. Fish, my child. Fish heads, mayhap. Child? Hardly. Oh yes, yes, but a child, yeah. To my ears. Youngsters, I believe you're mistaken. Take a closer look. She shuffles up to you. The fish stink is nearly overpowering. The old woman squints at your face first, frowning and then into your eyes. Only then does she recoil in surprise. Oh my, how many years have those eyes seen? I do not know. How many do you think? Don't know, don't know. Too many, I'd say, but no matter. She leans close to whisper in your ear. It won't do to rattle the passerby. Let's keep it our little secret. She resumes her normal tone of voice. So, fish, my child? She pokes you in the belly. No fish for me, but I had some questions. She shakes her head little... Her... Oh, she shakes her little wrinkled head. No answers have I, only fish. Very well, what do you offer, exactly? My fish, my silly child. Fish of all sorts, and fish heads. For those too short of jink for the whole ones. Teeny tiny fish heads. Where do the fish come from? They're brought to Sigal from all over the plains, my boy. Would you like some? I sell only the heads, should you be short on jink. I don't need fish, but I had some questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured. What do you offer? Uh, okay, I've no need for fish or their heads, for that matter. Farewell. Uh, 4,000 copper is what I have. Ah, oh, this is the guy where I can sell my... Oh, it's also him. That guy too. There's a worldly look about him. His deep voice is gentle but confident. Ah, hello there. Are you ready to sample some of the most delectable treats from across the plains, my good man? What do you have? All manner of delicacies to delight your palate, my good man. Arborean... Or Arborean fire seeds. Garbar root. Elysian pears. Crimson lotus petals. Bitopian shepherds bread and it said beard <laughs> shift spice from the chaos of limbo and sea plums are what I have at the moment 
Merely five coppers for a taste of anything you like. Ask about something's taste. Hmm? What do the fire seeds taste like? I can only suggest that you try it, my good man, and see for yourself. Okay, what do you have? Ask about the taste. Two. Purchase something. Oh! Oh! Uh. Yeah, I realise. So... Hmm. I don't know if I want any of those. Oh god, I just... Oops. I pressed B. Uh, not B. What am I saying? I pressed 2 by accident. And then I realised. I was like, oops, my bad. Okay, so he offers a small brown cube of things. No, a small brown cube of what looks to be rubbery, rubbery vegetable matter. It is quite chewy, do not swallow it, but spit it out when it no longer has taste. Okay, I don't think I'd want that. Let me try again. Or let me try something else. Hmm. I just like, pop it in your mouth. I'm not entirely sure. I'll try it, sure. Pop it in your mouth. So the root initially... Oh, the root initially quite hard and difficult to chew has a sweet syrupy taste. Soon it becomes soft and gummy and you find yourself merrily smacking away. Eventually though the flavour dies off and you spit the gooey brown wad into the gutter. Okay, so I can just try a bunch of everything? I mean that's pretty cool. Hmm. Right, so uh, let me try something else. Hmm. Fire seeds. Don't swallow them, simply spit them out when they finish tingling. He smiles and offers you a handful of small red seeds. Sure. The seeds, sweet and tasting faintly of cinnamon, become warm and, t warm and tingle in your mouth. It takes a moment for you to realise that they've actually burst into flame. Soon, however, the sensation dies out and you spit them into the gutter. Let me try something else. A pear. He proffers you the largest, juiciest looking pear you've ever laid your eyes on. These are my favourites, the old merchant chuckles. So sweet, reminds me of my youth. Eat the pear. There's nothing supernatural about this pear's flavour, but it may be, or it may well be, the best you've ever had. I'm spending so much on these random things. Petals. What look like small brownish red flakes. Upon closer inspection, they are revealed to be dried flower petals. These may make you a bit dizzy, my good man, so take care once you've eaten them. The petals melt quickly on your tongue, leaving behind an odd but not quite unpleasant aftertaste that you can't, or that you can't place. Despite the old merchant's warning, however, you don't feel the slightest bit disoriented. He seems slightly disappointed to see it has no effect on you. Let me try something else. Uh, the bread. Two thick slices of spiced nut bread. They are very ar uh, aromatic, smelling of carrots and almond. Eat the bread. The bread tastes much as you'd expected of carrots and almonds. It is slightly sweet and light, leaving you hungry for more of the stuff. I'm mostly just eating all these things because I want to read the dialogue. The shift spice. Ooh. Okay, so he dangles a tiny paper packet before you, wet your fingertip and place it into the spice, then simply lick it from your finger. Each dip should taste different. Whoa. The spice may taste of whatever one would like. It is little more than a matter of concentration and willpower to bend its flavour to one's whim. Try some. You finish off the entire packet in a matter of 9 or 10 licks, as promised each taste provides you, or provided you, a different flavour. It's a cool. A sea plum. Hand you an, a small plum of an odd blue-green colour. Don't worry, they're pitless. Eat the whole of it. Eat the sea plum. The plum's rind is slightly bitter and extremely sour, enough to make one grimace and shudder, but the fruit's meat is remarkably sweet. Eaten together, they complement each other well. Right, yeah, that, I ate everything. It was pretty good. Right, this is the guy I want to speak to. Yes, I have. Because now I can sell my stuff. Wait. It has faint engravings on its surface, you can't make out the designs. Oh, I can't... Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm just thinking what I want to sell. Obsidian earring. Only by thieves. I may as well wait till I have a thief. Yeah, the bone frame journal I may as well get rid of. It seems stuff does disappear, because I got rid of a bunch of stuff. Let's sell those. Morador's ruby, don't want to get rid of that. Right, more I think is the one that had the most. Wait, green steel dagger. Two to five. I think that's better than the one I'm using. Gold earring. This, this simple gold pendant may have once hung from a nobleman's a nobleman's ear. Alright, sell. So if I get out of that, go to my inventory. Alright, go to Mart. Put that into my inventory. 
One to six. Oh, it's enchanted though. That's two to five. Hmm. Could do that. Okay, what do I want to get rid of? The bone frame journal. I think. Pen's note. I don't really need this. Yeah, I'm just carrying like random shit that I don't need. Oh yeah, we also have uh, random rags. Yeah, I don't think they'll be worth anything. Anytime soon. What else do I have that I could get rid of? I'll get rid of Pen's note. And the... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know why I have a cobblestone. I know it's one thing I just picked up. Um, The negative token something I should probably keep. Yeah, they're just on the floor. Leave them. Right, so... This attractive young woman is smiling and beckoning to all... Pass up, wait, to all passers-by as she calls out the virtues of her goods. Plates, jugs, cups, tankards. Drink from the goblets of the finest lords. Upon seeing you, she waves you over as if you were an acquaintance. Okay, I had some questions. Sorry to say I have no time for questions. I must sell what I can before the day is done, for my family is large and hungry. She holds open the lid of her, the grate behind her. Are you sure you wouldn't like to see what I have to offer? Hmm, very well, I'll, I'll look. You peer into the crate. It's full of plates, cups, jugs, tankards, cutlery and the like. They look to be of varying degrees of quality, but some of it appears quite nice. As you're looking them over, she presses up against you. See anything you like, sir? Hmm? Her long waving hair brushing against your shoulder smells faintly sweet. Like vanilla. Where does this all come from? She flash flashes a wicked grin. My lovers are all burglars, sir. These goods are pilfered from the homes of sigils or sigils noble nobles. Upon seeing your expression, she laughs sweetly. A jest, sir, merely. My father and brothers are tinkers. These are wares which are discarded from the nobles' manners and made good by them once more. See, that's all I wish to know. Farewell. Oh, sir, but wait, she puts her hand on your forearm. Her touch is light as a feather. Are you sure there's nothing you need? Surely something for your own home or a gift? She bites her lip coyly, cocking her head slightly. Well, there's a nice plate right there. What's it? Wait. <laughs> what, sir? This one here? <laughs> no, uh, that... Wait, this is ridiculous. I need no plates. Look, my apologies, I really don't need any plates. Farewell. She looks so her... You're nearly stricken with guilt. Slowly she lowers the lid of her crate. Farewell then, sir. Should you need anything in the future, I beg you beg you to return here. Nowhere else. Shall you find such fine goods at such wondrous pri prices? She waves sadly. Aw, oh, I didn't mean to let her down. <laughs> jump, Lim Lim, jump! Wait, so... <laughs> jump, Lim Lim, jump! The merchant seems to suddenly notice you. Oh, greetings! Would you like to purchase one of these playful gambling Lim Limbs, my lord? So I, I can actually purchase a thing. Really? Huh. Now if I ask some questions. Not yet, just what are these Lim Limbs? They are from the Outlands, my lord. Neither holy insect nor animal. They are friendly, playful, and quite loyal. He takes a sidelong glance at the Lim Limbs, then leans it close to Whisper. Pretty tasty, too, in a pinch. I had some other questions. There's only one question I'll answer, I'm afraid. Are about the Lim Limbs, my lord. So what are they? I'd like to purchase one. Oh, wow. The Lim Lim will provide its own food, eating insects, tiny rodents, and the like. They will follow you everywhere you go, are easy to clean up, are easy to clean up after, are quiet, exercise themselves with their constant flop, uh, flipping about, and best of all, they leap over 15 feet when prodded with hot coals. <laughs> one will only cost you but 40 coppers, my lord. A mere pittance for such an entertaining pet and friend. Mark, what do you think? Why not, boss? It'll be fun to kick around when we're done, right? Hmm. Well, I can't kick it... <laughs> I can kick it vicariously through you, at least. I want to see that 15-foot hot... <laughs> 15 foot hot cold jump. I'll take one, merchant. My own Lim Lim. Ah. Oh. Which one is it? Where's me Lim Lim? Oh, is it... Has it been, like, added to my inventory? Oh my god, it has! My pet Lim Lim! This is your pet Lim Lim! Talk to it! so I can examine it. This is your pet Lim Lim. Noticing it has your attention, it chirps up at you lovingly. Ah, Examine it. Your Lim Lim appears both insect and animal in origin. Its legs are oversized, but its arms are small, nearly uh, vestigial. And a brightly speckled half-shell runs down its back. It spots twin pairs of insect-like wings and has tiny black eyes and a mouth that always appears to be smiling gleefully. Oh, I want to pet him. 
The Lim Lim squirms about merrily, its wings buzzing. It seems to enjoy the affection immensely. Pet him some more. Oh. You can just pet it <laughs> endlessly. Put your Lim Lim down to run around a bit. Yeah! Look at all these. Yes! Oh man. It's too cute. Right, so... What do you have to offer? Oh wait, I can actually sell different things. Heart Charm. Heals 27 HP. Damn! I can actually get rid of all my bloody rings here, which is nice. He has no rings. He does. We also have a gaudy ring, but that's one I need to examine. Boom. Ah, oh, bollocks. I don't think I sold it. Yeah, I don't think so. Got more. Yeah, I didn't. I clicked done instead of sell. Also, I just realised that Mort has a clot charm for some reason. I mean, it's not a bad thing for them to have clot charms, but... You know. Right there. That's, that's fine. Q. I haven't quick saved in a while. So we have Hive Dwellers, Hive Dwellers. Uh, Profira. Okay, we've got loads of people. Craddock. May as well talk to him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you see a huge man watching the area with a tight-lipped frown and narrowed eyes. He is hunched slightly as if bearing a heavy load on his shoulders. The unpleasant smell of sweat and dirt wafts from his clothes. Greetings. The man glances down at you and his frown deepens. Aye, what are you sniffing around here for? You, Craddock? Mayhap? He studies your face as if trying to recall you. If I am, what be it to you? Okay... Um... So, I come with a message from Bane the Sender. The message states, The shipment must be incursed by the third day or there will be a penalty. By the hells, can they be such fools that they think we can miracle it there? Alright then, your message has found its way to the right ears. For, for all the good it'll do. What's the problem? Look around you, Craddock nods at the labourers in the marketplace, then scowls. These laggards and halfwits can barely keep up with the load as it stands. And now it needs doing in half the time. Do you need any help? I'll tell you what I need, all my men to show up for work. g has gone missing since this morn, and I need him back now. g where'd he go? That hive-bred goat is probably passed out on the street somewhere in the, by the smouldering corpse where he should be helping us. Or when he should be here helping us, worthless sod. I could go find it for you, for a price. Craddock is silent for a moment, then nods. I... You find g -Li. You tell him to drag his worthless bub bub and hide here. I'll pay you for your trouble. He frowns. When you found him. Now git. Alright, I'll look for him. Farewell. Updated my journal. Yeah! What's this? Reekwind. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Oh. I want to ex explore this place a bit more. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, hive thugs. We've got Harlot. <laughs> the best character. More Hive Thugs. Lots of Hive Thugs. I was going to say, luckily they probably won't want to attack me because they will die. Angry Hive Dweller. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Right. There's lots of just Hive Dwellers. Wait a minute. Your towering spires. So, Cryer of Ezanon. Streams of tears have carved channels down this man's dust-covered dust face. He looks to be a monk or a holy man of some sort, but the dirt covering his body makes it nearly impossible to see the man beneath. He is chanting and rolling his head back and forth. It looks like some sort of ritual. Okay. <clears throat> oh god, I think I have a burp. Maybe not. The man stops his friendly, frenzied chanting and glares at you with his tear-rimmed eyes. He opens his parched mouth to speak, but all he can manage is a withered croak. What's wrong? Why are you crying? Oh, is that why he's called the crier? <laughs> I his voice is so hoarse that it sounds like he has been without water for days. As you watch, a tear trickles down his face. I am a crier of Ezanon. Ezanon? Who is that? Updated my journal. Who, who is Ezanon? The man throws back his head and gives a rasping laugh. It sounds brutal and defeated. Ezanon, it is not a man, but a city. Why do you cry for a city? We cry its name because Ezanon must not be forgotten. All the criers of Ez Anon carry this burden. You mourn a city. Why would? Why do you do such a thing? Because its name is all that remains. Its avenues of light, its great spiralling parks, when it was laid waste and reduced to memory, 
Only three score of its people survived. It was our duty to see that its name was remembered across the plains. Many criers of Ezanon have died for the sake of remembering. Many. If it places you and the others at risk, why don't you stop? The tears I shed, the dust that cloaks me, these things are as nothing com compared to what awaits should I give up the sacred but oh, my sacred burden. We must see to it that its name is remembered. We are living memorials to its passage. If that's so, then what happens if you all die? A fresh tear springs to the crier's eye. Even his dust-caked face cannot disguise his look of despair. I do not know. We criers of Ezanon cannot mourn it forever. Even now, the dust clings to our robes. The spit dries in our mouths. Our bodies wither and die. Is there any way I could help you? You are kind to ask. The crier shakes his head. Unless you can immortalize Ezanon, there is no help to be had. Does it have to be you that cries Ezanon's name? Does it matter? Another man might cry the name, but then he too would die. A tear slowly forms in the corner of his eye, then begins to trickle down his cheek. There is nothing to be done when the cries of Ezanon die, so dies Ezanon. Um, okay. What about a tombstone? The cryer blinks. Tombstone? It's a tomb that records a man's name, his life, and a eulogy. If it serves a man, could it not serve a city that has died? Stones may do such things? Yes, and their lifetime is much longer than a man's. If its name was carved on stone, would Ezanon's memory be served? The man pauses. Would others see this name? Yes, it would be there for all to see, long after you have died. The man nods. If such a thing were possible, he turns to you. Where would one find such a stone? I could go look for one. If I find one, I could see to it that Ezanon's name is carved upon it. Yeah, I'm not going to say in exchange for coppers. You, you would do this? I... The man's eyes water up again. You would be set, setting all the cries of Ezanon free, but a scar of us remain. The burden of remembering would be over after so many years. I would do so. I will return when the name is carved. Updated my journal. Hey! Okay. But what? They randomly decided to attack. Dickbags. Holy balls, they died. Who the hell did 18 damage? Yeah, bitch. Fucking owned. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Before I go in, I just want to make sure. Wait, what is this building? Hold up. Go on in. I don't know, this is just one I've not been in. It's just a small dwelling. Ooh. Don't mind me? Oh. Well, you really don't need to mind me. Unless you have something in here. <gasps> oh, man. Maybe he actually has something useful. Hmm. Ah, ah, God, my wrist. You see a pale man standing in the middle of the room. He's hunched over and doesn't look well. <laughs> Greetings. I feel terrible. What happened? I'm not sure, but I think a bit of rest will do me good. Can you please leave me alone? Farewell. I'm wondering what I could use as a tombstone. <gasps> ah, I think I have an idea. Do I want to go do that now or... Yeah, I'll do it now. All right. Sod it. And it's done. No, the tombstone. I can't remember what it's called. The Dustman Monument. Yeah. I mean, that's what they carve names upon. You would just be able to tell them to carve a certain name upon it, and that should suffice. I would hope. Done. Alrighty. I think, I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I finished everything here. Like, talking to people. And, you know, just doing business. I'm pretty sure the only place I've got left is Rackbaker Square, which I'll do once I've finished in the southwest. All right. Now, here we go. Yeah, this monument. Obsidian Monument has names chiseled on it. Kind of a giveaway, to be honest. Death of Names. You see Death of Names, he's standing at the monument with the same crooked smile, his arm cradled against his side. Greetings. Ah, here we go. I'd like to bury a name. His eyes seem to slide over you. Name, the way he speaks the words, it sounds like the tolling of a bell. I'd like to bury a name. There we go. He nods and unfolds his small hand from where it is cradled on his side. It looks... Uh, atrophied. It is the size of a child's hand. Costs jink to bury a name. Three coppers. Three. Quinton. Okay, four. Updated my journal. The coppers fall into death of name's hand, and he tucks his arm back to his side. His eyes, now suddenly alive, roll to the back of his head. Then snap forward and begin scanning the monolith and the walls of the memorial area. Wait. Okay, he catches sight of a spot on the wall and he quickly scuttles over to it. Punches down and then begins to chip at the wall. 
He stops a few moments later, hops up, then returns to you, buried. The word has a finality about it that makes you feel... Oh, that makes you uncomfortable. Thank you. Farewell. Now we did it. Easy enough. Ah. Well, that was my good deed for the day. I'm wondering if my alignment's actually changed, or if I'm still just... neutral. That's the inventory, you dunce. One thing I do know is I have a lot of money. I'm still neutral. True neutral. I'm gone. Which is just the best kind of neutral. I could rest, but eh. I'm gaining health over time, so it's fine. Wait, has my pet Limlim, like, disappeared? I never even thought. Unless it got returned to my inventory. Oh no. It might still be just right. running about the square. I hope so. That will suck otherwise. Wait a minute. Oh, it is here. Okay, it's fo it's following me still. Good. Right, where's Cryo? Oh, there he is. Booyah! So, he still emits choked sobs as he chants the Dead City's name and tears roll down his cheeks. I've seen to it that Ezanon's name has been remembered. It lies carved upon the Blackstone Monument outside the mortuary. My journal. Suddenly there is a brief whisper in the air and the man's eyes dry. One of the tears that ran on his cheek simply vanishes. Then Ezanon is served. I will tell my fellow criers of the stone you have described. You have my gratitude. No, I'm not sp It was three coppers. I don't need paying. It was nothing. Farewell, I hope you and your brother spend the rest of your days peacefully. There we go. Did that affect my standing? <gasps> no! So who are you? Harlot. Ha uh, what? They just randomly decided to attack. What dickbags? Also should give that to Mark, because he's the one that's got all of the Dirty Rat charms. Where is this place? Office of Vermin and Disease Control. Isn't that... Don't they have a quest? I'm waiting for these guys to turn. And just start to attack me for no bloody reason. It's a common theme. Miram. <laughs> Come with me a bit, love. Iron nails? What the fuck? I'm just like, what is she doing? This broad-shouldered woman is shuffling about amongst the huge beams lying on the street. She kicks at the beams with iron-shod boots. Every once in a while she bends down and wrenches a nail from one of the boards with her bare hands. She holds each one up, appraising it, then drops it into a leather sling bag. Greetings. She, tra she straightens up. Hearing your approach, she's smiling politely, but from her stance and the way her hand rests close to the hilt of her weapon, you can tell she's ready for trouble. You notice one of her eyes has a milky film over it. That's close enough there, Cutter. What do you need from me? I had some questions. Let's go away then. Who are you? She pulls three nails from her sling bag, tossing them spinning in the air, and catches them in her palm. Iron nails, they call me. She drops back into, or drops them back into the bag with a muffled, muffled clink. Why are you collecting nail the nails? I sell them to the man, to a man. Name a uh, Hamris in the lower ward. Make her a coffin, he is. Tell me more of this Hamris, or Hamris. There's not much to say. He's a bit chatty. He'll rattle his bone box till you bar me, if you let him. But he's a fair bargainer. If he needs the nails, I need the jink. And that's about as far as it goes. Where's the lower ward? Eh, I used to know the way I did, but the dabbers have changed the streets around again. Don't know how to get there now. I'll need to chart a new path. But I figure the dabbers will straighten things out eventually. I don't need to ask about the dabbers. Does anyone else hear scavenge nails? She grins and shakes her head. No one was clever enough I had the will to do it before me, and I shoved off anyone who tried to jump me who tried to jump me claim since. She pats the long bladed dagger hanging at her side lovingly. So I see. Your claim. Aye, that's what I call it. Honest labour's hard to come by in the hive, and I'm not about to let some sodding picker peel me off me work. I've sent more than one Berg running and howling holding their guts in, or off with the collectors, if they were unlucky. Her dead eye gleams maliciously. The hive knows this spot is iron nails it does. Is that how your eye was ruined? Nal's face turns hard. None of your business, Burke. Why, would you like a matching wound for your collection? Are you threatening to add it? I'd love to see you try. No, that particular one is not quite me. She laughed heartily. I and I don't think you have much room for another scar besides. I had some other questions. Um, nah. I don't really need to know any of the other things. Interesting. So she's just picking up nails. What a weirdo. So we got Miriam. 
It's a woman stands silently by the wall, staring off into the distance. She seems to be unconcerned with the flow of traffic around her and clutches a wooden pole from which dozens of small fish are dangling. Greetings. No low, sir. She squints at you for a moment, trying to discern your identity. Oh my, Aero was thinking you were one of me regular customers. She pop, uh, proffers her fish pole. Tuna, sir? Mackerel? Sea cucumber? No fish, thanks. I had some questions. Hmm. Her mouth pressed, or presses down in a, into a tight-lipped frown. She stares off over your shoulder. Look behind you, see what she's staring at. You can see nothing of interest behind you as you turn back to where you catch her looking at you. She looks away quickly, resuming her staring off into the distance once more. What, do I look familiar to you? Goodness no, she paused for a moment. Ah, you do. Have you seen me before then? I think, ye... Uh, I think, yeah. Or a man with your very likeness, sir. T'was so long ago. Tell me. Also, you see, me sight's not so good now. Uh, T'wasn't back then, neither. But I thought I saw you walking past with a small group trailing along behind you. What did these people look like? It's hard to say, sir. T'was so long ago and you walked by so quick-like, but I remember now. The way you held your head up, there was a woman following you, trying to stop you. To get you to turn around speak to her, but you pushed her away. What happened then? Beautiful woman she was. Looked so sad, so angry. All at once, she stood there for a moment, then followed along behind you just the same, hustling to catch up. You said there was a group? Who else was there? She shrugs. There was at least two other gentlemen with you, sir. The only one I remember too, cl too clearly, though, was tall, thin, reeked of bub. He did. I smelled him from across the way. Looked like he hadn't bathed in ages, too. He followed you close, he did, and never said a word. Acted like the woman wasn't even there, even when she bumped against him trying to stop you. That's all I remember, sir. Give us some copper for a time. How much do you give to the fishwife? Eh, uh, twenty coppers. She stares at the heaping handful of coins for a moment as if unsure what to do. You hold them a bit closer and she finally takes them, laughing uneasily. Oh, oh, oh my. Why, thank you, sir. Th uh, thank, <laughs> thank you, sir. May the Lady Shadow pass you over and fortune always find you. Please come and visit me anytime. Thanks, farewell. That's cool. It's always cool just learning certain things. Do you want to go into the disease? Uh, disease. The vermin place. What else is there? Let's go. So where else can I? I can't go any further to the right. It's just a hive dweller, hive thug. And I'm assuming there's nothing else. Yeah, just harlots. I mostly just want to talk to the people that have out actual names. Because they're usually the most unique characters. And usually have something interesting to say. Laborer? Can I actually loot this? I was just going to piss everybody off. Okay, it's locked. Probably a good thing. Requind. Hmm. Okay, so this man is looking at you with a strange bug-eyed stare. His eyes are huge. So huge they look ready to pop out of his sockets and roll across the cobblestones. He nods. He nods. Eagerly as you approach. Bobbing his head like a bird. And as you near him, you suddenly notice the smell of urine and feces surrounding him. Nice. Greetings. The man sniffles, wiping his nose on his sleeve, then opens his mouth to reveal black and rotten gums. Stories for coins, Sarah? His breath reeks. It smells like this man has been keeping rotten meat stored inside his mouth. Stories for coins? Who are you? The man snorts, thick with phlegm. Names, names, who you are, who you are. His head does a slight twitch every time he repeats himself. Names, dangerous, dangerous. He glances at the ground and st stirs the dirt with his foot. Dangerous? Knowing a name or be stuck with or being stuck with one, both both this, ugh, I can't talk today. My God, both's a mess of trouble. He looks back up at you. My name's a been a given name, not one asked for. Reekwind. Once again, you become conscious of his reeking breath and the smell of urine and feces that surround him. A given name, a given name. <laughs> that name fits you well. Hmm. Okay, so ah, uh, uh, an appropriate name. Oh, is that your real name? Not my true name, true name. Rickwind mumbles on, his head twitching every time he says name. A true name's a dangerous thing, gives others power. He stares at you with his huge eyes and wags his finger. Keep your name secret, keep it close, never let it out. What do you mean? Names are like smells, things can track you with them. Rickwind coughs, his eyes almost popping out of his skull as he does so. His cough seems to loosen his bowels for he breaks wind loudly, as if to accentuate his point. If someone knows a true name, it gives them power. He licks his lips, the power to hurt. I don't know my true name. Requin's eyes widen, seeing his eyeballs bulge even larger makes you uneasy. Then you are blessed. Blessed. Remain nameless, and you shall be as a spirit on the plains, untraceable, untrackable, unseen, undiscovered. 
He smacks his gums wetly, a name chosen, a name given. It allows others to find you and hurt you. Have you been hurt? Requin gives a twitching nod, then scratches himself. Let my name slip once, once, only once, only once. His eyes film over as if the memory is painful, then glances at you uneasily. Tell you the story I can, I will, but three coppers I or must I see. His face splits into a smile as he says the word coppers, and his raking breath hits you like a hammer. Very well, here's three coppers. Requind... Wait, what's this? Requind gets into a stance, looks left, looks right, then faces you. His face clinches, then with a grunt he breaks wind again. The smell nearly, nearly levels you, but he takes no notice. Cursed eye, walk the wards in splendor. He stands up stiffly, nose high in the air. He saunters back and forth, nodding to invisible passers-by. Listen. Dated my journal. Requind freezes, his arms akimbo. Crossed, path was, crossed paths with a crossed one. Had the looking of a pumpkin, his seeds cursed. Requind then thrusts his belly out so as to appear fat. Slicks back his hair with his filthy palm so he looks almost bald. And begins drumming his fingers on his fat belly. He then walks about circling the spot where his stuffy upper class persona used to be. All a jumble with curses this one was. With a sneer and a careless gesture, Requin tosses an invisible curse at the stuffy persona. Okay, keep listening. Knew my name, let it slip I had. I had. All it took, took it all. He stiffens up again. Inhaling deeply and resuming his upper class persona. The persona s suddenly crumbles, or crumples, and Requin breaks wind violently, then exhales, filling the air with his foul reeking breath. Cursed with stenches, smells excrement. Oh... Came here to tell tales, all good for, all good for now. Now Requind is the name, given name, given name. Ah, uh, I see. So what happened to you? Oh no no no, not today. I don't want to leave. Greetings Requind. I'd like to hear your story. Okay, so very well. Oh, here we go. So, I'd like to hear the story about how you were cursed. Requin gets into stents. Oh, wait, I think I've already done this one, have I not? Yeah. So, yeah, he says the same. Upper class persona. So, wait, if I, I'd like to hear a story. Here's three coppers. Hmm. <laughs> Which one should I do? Wait for him to choose a story? I don't know. I want to hear the story of, of the man who came to the city without name or memory and spoke with the cursed storyteller who warned him of the danger of names. Rickman stops twitching and scratching for a moment and stares at you. That tale, that tale costs nothing for it is worth... N it is worth nothing. It is worth nothing that it would be a sad tale indeed. Nevertheless, I would hear it. Where would such a tale begin, Requind grunts, then gives a reeking wheeze that makes your eyes tear up. He seems to be thinking. We begin with a man waking up in the mortuary, believed dead, but in truth only his memories are dead. Requind nods and studies you and starts scratching himself violently as if to give himself scars. Dead but not dead, no memories, no memories, no name. He escapes the mortuary, enters the hive, speaks to a man who let his true name slip once and has regretted it. Requind seems hypnotized by your words. Yes, yes, much danger in naming, perhaps. He pauses. Perhaps the man to whom the nameless one speaks is a warning to the dangers of names. He seems to chew this over. Perhaps he who has forgotten his name is better off. Is he? Is it better to suffer the truth with all its consequences or is it better to remain ignorant? Which of the two men is better off? Requin gives a hacking cough then spits the spittle green and wet. Then he turns back to you. It is your question, your tale. He speaks slowly. It is you who must answer it. The man who knows his true name is better off for he knows himself and is strong and is stronger person for it. Hmm. I think the person that knows his true name is better off. Because they actually know who they are, they're not nameless. They have their memory. Rickwind mulls this over, licking his lips. He begins to nod slowly, then mumbles under his breath as if debating with himself. Eventually he turns back to you. That is a tale, a tale with a moral that tells the teller's morals. He coughs and spits another phlegmy glob onto the cobblestones, a tale that will answer itself in time, in time. Perhaps what happens will happen, and it may be that this tale has no answer. It must have an answer, and every tale has an ending. I will refuse to accept it any other way. Requin scratches himself for a moment, nodding, then reaches 
Into the folds of his robe and flicks you a coin. For such a tale eclipsed copper, he sneers, no more for the tale's not finished. Finished. Okay, a fair price. I want to know... Hmm... Yeah, I want to get his quest. Yeah. I want to get his quest, but I'm not entirely sure how I get it. Uh, yeah, it's like, I like to hear the story. Very well. Choose a story. Maybe this one? I don't know. Spyward, spyward, he points to his left at the charred alley in, at the dist oh, in the distance. An alley of dangerous angles. He bends his limbs in a twisted parody of one of the skeletal buildings. Not always angled, not always burned and charred. Once alive, no longer. Flames, fire, he flings his hands up in the air, then waves them to simulate flames. The alley burned, great smoke, ash, everywhere. In the end, only skeletons of buildings left. Bones of dead buildings, bones of dead buildings, ang uh, and angles. Everywhere, angles. Updated my journal. He hunches forward, his voice a whisper. Again, the stench from his body hits you like a wave. Dangerous now. Bad men have set up their kip there. Kip there. He bows and breaks wind into quick spurts like a bugle blowing. That is the tale of how a street becomes an alley of dangerous angles. How did the fire start? He makes a semicircle over his heart. A man made it so. A beast made it so. A man who even, whom even fiends admire. Who? A sorcerer's tale. I think I know who that is. Yeah. Ignis. Is it Ignis? I can't remember if that's actually his name. Not entirely sure. Either way. A sorcerer's tale filled with madness, sadness, burning, yearning. A tale I can tell. A tale I can tell. I will, but three coppers must I see. He hisses, then cackles, in a way that reminds you of a fire burning. A dangerous tale, a dangerous tale. Very well, here's three coppers. A sorcerer there was, no simple hedge wizard this, but a mage of power. Requind brings his hand together uh, reverently, then smells evilly. He burned with the art, and the art burned him. The name given him was Ignis. A name respected, then feared, then hated, then punished. Requind gives a rattling wheeze, then claws the air and hisses, apparently imitating Ignis. Taught by one of the last great... Uh, is that Magi? Ignis was, as, and as an apprentice, Ignis learned much, much, and nothing at the same time. Requin shakes his head sadly, in his heart his coal black heart, a fire blazed. It burned, it burned, and it hungered. Requin claws at his chest as if in pain. As it hungered, Ignis hun hungered. It was his wish to see the plains burn. In the night, Requin hunches down and begins to slowly start the direction of the alley, a mad grin on his face, Ignis came to the alley that was to be the alley of angles, and the fire in his eyes, the fire in his heart, both he let out. Requin points at the alley, then flings his arms in the air, silently screaming and laughing at the same time. Flesh ran like wax, people like candles, and Ignis laughed, laughed. Requin crumble, crumples to the ground, his body racked with imagined pain, an evil, an evil was done, and forgotten not, forgotten not. He stands up, then hunch, hunches over, looks left, looks right, and starts mumbling. As if secretly in a conference with someone, something was to be done, be done. He stands up stiffly, his face resolute. A punishment was decided. All the hedge wizards, midwives, rune tellers, copper pinchers, witches, or copper pinching witches. All manner of magelings, they came all, even those with the smallest trace of the art, to punish Ignis. Separately, they were, they were flies. He makes a buzzing noise between his rotten rotten gums. Together, dangerous, dangerous. He hums and raises his hands. Caught Ignis, granted his wish. He swallows his hands as if casting a spell. He wished to burn, they granted it. Using his own desire to fuel the casting, they made his body a door to the plane of fire. They intended to kill him, kill him. Updated my journal. Failed, failed. Requind breaks wind again, as if to accentuate the failure of the wizard. Or wizards. Ignis lived, Ignis lived. Only slept blankets of flame, f not flames, flames turned in his sleep as he burned never happier never happier he shuts his eyes wraps his arms around himself and turns slowly burning ever burning his eyes suddenly snap open one day he will wake and then then the planes shall burn an unfortunate tale farewell maybe i do have the quest i, I leveled up Woohoo! Oh, i do oh well i've had that probably since i got that bloody story oh well never mind 10 more hit points Right, so, what do I want? Wisdom is incredibly high. Heroic wisdom. That's tempting. 
Although if it doubles my XP again, that means I need 32,000. Uh, yeah. I think I'll start increasing intelligence next. Strength and everything I don't really care for. To be honest. By the way, I do remember that I need to go to... Uh, I need to go find Craddock's lackey. Yeah. Which shouldn't be too bad. Mm-hmm. I think we're in the right place. All right. I know his name began with a J. He also said he was like passed out or something. All right, cool. Oh, there he is. Well, that was hard. Oh, has he always been here? And I win. You see a thin man with stained clothes. The hooked nose and two stubby horns jutting from his forehead. He is stumbling about and muttering to himself. He stinks of brine, vomit, vomit and cheap, cheap wine. Okay, so we've got that. Hmm. So... Are you July? If so, Craddock needs you back at the marketplace. Craddock? The man's eyes widen. Ah, Craddock. Me... Me generous... Ah, generous. Generous boss. Well, you can tell him this. He can pike off. And that he's a filthy dog. Occur the lowest saw. And July's not working... Not a working for him anymore. He jumps you with his finger. Tell him that. I'll tell him. Uh, I'll tell him. Farewell. Alright, cool. I don't think we're going to be the ones that are punished. If anything, we're probably going to have to fill in for him. Which, I suppose it's fine. I don't even know what it wants me. What he wants me to do. Are we getting attacked again? No way. Done. Okay, we're not. It's just the music, did the, the combat music. Where it literally just starts with a whistle. Hey, my pet's still here. I should probably pick him up before I leave. To go to new areas. There we go, Craddock. I found July. Is that right? Craddock glances around. Where is he then? He said to Pike off that you were a cur of the lowest sort and that he wasn't going to work for you any longer. Oh god. Update sure. Craddock's face, t face turns a bright red and his face cracks into a snarl. Damned be his name. May all the evils of the plains hound his footsteps. A blistering stream of insults, threats and speculation about July's family roots issues from Craddock's mouth. Hey! Ooh! Mark clicks his teeth together as Craddock builds up steam. You can almost hear him taking notes inside his skull. Craddock finishes his tirade with a grunt. Damn that J- uh, July. I'm in need of a day's work. <laughs> if there's nothing more, I'll take my copper now. You know I could fill in for him if you need help. Craddock studied you for a moment. You? Huh, you couldn't. He suddenly falls silent. Well, mayhap you can. It's hard work and there's no drinking on my watch. Understood. Let's get started. So the work is long, but at the end of the shift, you are not the least bit tired. Craddock grunts as you return. You did well enough. Here's your pair. He tosses you a handful of coins and I'll get. We've no more use for you. What about the payment for delivering July's message, message to you? Craddock grunts, then reaches into his purse and counts off ten commons, which he tosses to you. There's your pay, now get. Hey! Well, there's that. We did that. So, what else do we have? We found Craddock. Then go back and tell Bane. Okay. The source of Farrakh... Farad's body. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Find so 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 ago for Emmerich. So ago. Oh yeah, we still got like other people to talk to. We got Gauha. You see a thin, yellow-skinned humanoid covered covered with a variety of dazzling tattoos. His eyebrows have been ex accented with black charcoal lines, and his teeth are filled uh, filed to points. He sees you and waves you over, rattling his dice in dice in his hand. Greetings. He is about to speak when his eyes, shiny and black, like orbs of jet, fall upon Dakon. The two of them stare silently at one another for a moment before the tattooed uh, gifts their eyes gaze t returns to you. His voice is low and raspy. Goa greets you. You have come to play a game. Yes. No. Actually. <laughs> Why would I do that? Hmm. I'll play. Sure. So he... So Gawa reaches into his tunic and pulls out a coin. This coin, your coin. He places it at your feet He and pulls out another. This coin, uh, Gawa's. 
He places it at his own feet, then holds up two dice between his thumb and index finger. The dice, we both roll one, yes? Go on. Oh! You roll higher both coins. He snatches the coins up from the ground and proffers them to you. Yours. Go a roll higher. He quickly tucks the coppers back into his tunic. Mine. Neither rolls higher. The coin stays for another roll, so how much coin will lie at your feet? 100. Jesus. I'll do 25. You both roll the dice until Gower's roll until Gower rolls higher. He snatches up your coins, tucking them in to his tunic. He seems to hesitate for a moment, then speaks. Again, yes? Wait, is something wrong? He'll regard you closely for a moment, then nods. Never do I indulge in Hashma's folly. Never do I cheat, human. But I see Fortune Reader know it. In the face of a man, however, you... In you, I see nothing. I know nothing. You have no luck, no fortune, neither good nor ill. Or you make your own, perhaps. I do not know. He places his dice back into his tunic. We might play later, perhaps, but no more this moment. Okay. So who else is there that I can talk to? Oh yeah, we got this chick. This grim-looking woman sp spares you only a brief glance before returning to her rent on top of the stage. She has a powerful voice that carries across the marketplace, even cutting through the noise made by the merchants and the surrounding foot traffic. Oh. All right, yeah, she's the one with the plates. Kiss call. Another guy I've not spoken to. You see a spindly looking merchant with a brush of grey and red stubble across his chin. He wears several layers of brightly coloured robes, so much so that he looks like a flag with arms and legs. He's shaking slightly as you watch. Greetings, I guess all he powers, uh, bows and spreads his trembling hands. As he does, you notice his hands and forearms are a twisted mass of black scar tissue, as if they were once badly burned. Uh, how did you hurt your hands? Giscard doesn't seem to have heard you. He answers only with his spiel, delivered in the same f same flat monotone. Giscard by cloth, cell cloth, washcloth, mend cloth, and he gestures <laughs> at his layers of clothing with his shaking hands. Wear cloth. I asked, how did you hurt your hands? Oh. Giscard's monotone breaks. Giscard by cloth, sell cloth, washcloth, mend cloth. He gestures at himself again, but his hands are shaking so badly that you, he cannot even finish. Can I see what you have? Okay. I didn't mean to make him feel bad. Jeez. A clipped copper piece. Hmm? Oh, it's worthless. Oh, lovely. How glad I am. Alright, when I got to him. Alright, so I can sell that. Wait, who can I sell the rings to? Wait, that's... Apparently it's worthless, but I don't think it is. I think I just need to give it to the right person. I may just use up the uh, scroll. What? Too far away, my ass. Where is he? Why is he over there? <sighs> right, okay, okay, okay. I see. Wait, that's the obsidian hearing. Don't need to get rid of that. So, wait, how does the thing work? Scroll of identity. Copy scroll. Copy spell, even. Copy? You succeeded in learning the spell. Oh! <gasps> he can use that! Wait, I need to do that first. Wait, how do I... Do okay, I copied a spell, but I don't know how it works. Oh wait, spellbook. Here we go. Identify. So what is these? Memorized mage spells, known mage spells, reign of anger, submerge of the will. Wait, so what's different? Level two. Oh, okay. Oh, he only has three slots. It seems. I don't quite know how this works. <clears throat> So if I went to spells, there we go, we have identify. Although I will admit I don't know how it works entirely. Oh wait, yeah I do. If I just go onto this, I should be able to do that, identify, spell. Oh. Okay. Maybe I don't know how to do it. Oh, damn it. I mean, at the same time, I'm, it's not that bad. Priest scrolls, that's something else. 
So instant, instant. The spell reveals the mysteries of an enchanted object, allowing you to know its exact abilities. Inventory usage only. Maybe it's the fact he can't use it yet? I don't exactly know. Unless it's just... keep doing that wrong. I can't use it. Maybe we need to rest. I don't really know. No, I'm also just thinking. Your path is mine. I want to pick up my limlim. Back here, little bitch. Yeah, pick it up. Yeah, he's back in my inventory, where he should be. I'm trying to think where I want to go. I think. Right, well, we spoke with Griskol. There's probably a few other things. I mean, there's a bunch of buildings that I've not been in that I should probably go in. I want to rest and then see if I can identify. Copying scrolls is cool, though. Assuming I can actually use the spell. I'm gone. Yeah, but if I can't, that kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. Right there. I'd like to rest. It's 5 a.m. Perfect. So inventory screen. Duck on. Identify. I still can't do it with a spell. Does it need to be somebody else? No, I don't understand this. Not particularly. Hmm. Yeah, they're the quivers. That says items. Hmm. That's just the noise it makes. The thing is, if I put any any magic here, it just it's blacked out. And only usable in inventory, but I can't use it. I was thinking maybe I just have to like you know drag, but I don't understand how it works. Might be something I have to look into. Not entirely sure. Uh, okay. What am I doing? I should just use the scroll. Yeah. No, because it just... I can't use any of these. Hmm. So you can copy that as well. Level 2. Damn. Hmm. Whatever. Right. Leave. Oh, what? Oh, wait, I was about to say it's night time. Done. But it isn't. It's actually just morning. Very, very early. Ooh. Okay. Keep catching my bloody mic. Yeah, I don't really mean to. Uh. Right, so... We have this building, which I can't remember what it is. We also have the vermin place. What's it say on here? It's just a dwelling. So it's not actually anything important. Are we not? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Five coppers. Woohoo! Oops. I mean, I did just rubber. Well, on the plus side, she gave me more money. <laughs> ah, bollocks. <laughs> I was not expected to get attacked. But, I mean, it makes sense that I did get attacked. <laughs> that was just me being stupid. Oh, God, I love when shit like that happens. It's just funny. Mm. I walked into somebody's house, stole from them, and I got confused why they attacked me. Braskin. Ooh, quick save. All right. He might be. He might get pissed. Oh no! Oh, you don't even do anything. Hold up. You have nothing. Ah, oh, you're a penis. All right, Braskin, what have you got? Ugh. Oh. There's a rumour going around the hive that some cutter went and killed the demon that was trapped in Morador's box. They say the battle with the demon left the horrible scars all over his body. That cutter wouldn't happen to be you, would it? Of course. 
Who else do you think could have done it? With a great boom in laugh. Brazen as well as brave, I like that. You'll become a legend when word of your heroic deeds spreads. Let me be one of the first to congratulate you. Come, let us drink together so you may tell the tale of your courage. I'll gladly share a tankard or two with you. I'm just like, was this a trap? Uh, okay. What the fuck? After a few tankards, a few songs, a few jokes, you've come to like uh, Braskin immensely. In fact, the moment you seem to like everyone soon... In fact, at the moment you seem to like everyone, soon Braskin falls to the floor in a drunken stupor. You realise it's time to go. Oh, he's... Oh, he's like... KO'd. Oh, my aching head. I don't think I'll ever recover. <laughs> oh, he falls down every time you talk to him. Oh, that's the best. I was wondering if the thing with Morador's box was ever going to be brought up. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad it was. I can't remember what that was. I think it was just a hive dwelling. Nothing else. There's a house. This is a house. Don't know what it's for. It's just a hive dwelling. Yeah, go on in. Why the hell not? Is this going to be one where I get attacked again? Talk to her first. Greetings. A worried look on her face. I'm waiting for my husband to get back. He's been gone for a while now. I'm getting worried. I'm sure he'll be back soon. I'm sure you're right. Oh my, look at the time. If you'll excuse me, I have to go. I have some work to finish up. Yeah, don't mind me. I'm just going to rob you. Eh, you've got nothing. What about on your bookshelf? You also have nothing. Nothing else I can loot. Well, you're absolutely useless, but on the plus side, it means I don't have to kill you. <laughs> Fresh ratsies. Oh, Creedon. He's also a new character. Well, not new, but, you know, named. This foul-looking man is, a, is quick to notice he's caught your attention. In wait, in moments he's upon you, hawking his wares, he carries a long wooden pole. Dozens of skinned and cooked ra cooked rats dangle from it. As he speaks, he gestures that to them with a broad, filth-encrusted hand, smiling a yellowed, snaggletoothed grin all the while. Oi, cut out! How you doing there? What sort of delicious ratsies is you interested in this fine day? Examine the ratsies. Each rat has been skinned and gutted, and their feet are oh, their feet and tails removed. They dangle from the pole by hooks punched through their necks. As you examine the various manners in which they've been prepared, you realise their heads are slightly misshapen. A bulbous knot of bone protrudes from each cranium, covered in ho uh, is it walls that give it the appearance of brain tissue. Those are strange-looking rats. Ah, you're not, uh, you've got a keen, there, a keen eye there, Cutter. All I sell is brain vermin, I do. I'm sure you'll find they've got a much richer flavour than your usual rat. Quite nice, really. He proffers them to you once more, waving the pole before your face enticingly. The rats sway to and fro, hooked like tiny sides of beef. Brain vermin. I cut a brain vermin. Foul creatures they are. Now your normal rats, they just eat stored goods and multiply spread disease and all that. A nuisance, really, no more. Your cranium rat, though, brain vermin, what I go after, they're just trouble. When you get more than an handful of the little pikers together, they start to get smart on you. Sometimes real smart, they become more intelligent. Sure as I'm standing here before you, they do. If I run across any more than two, than two score of them, I'd flee for me case like that. He snaps to emphasise the point, I would. He gets that many of them in a pack. Oh, you get that many of them in a pack. Why? Why, they get smart as a man, they do. Go on. Here's my best advice for you, Cutter. If you're bent on catching brain vermin, stick to small packs, a dozen or so at most, but I'll tell you. He steps close, his breath fetid in your face and speaks in a hus hushed tone. You run into more than that. More than a couple dozen, you run like you're in the shadow of the lady. He backs away from you again. Why, what's there to fear? Sorcery, Cutter, sorcery. He gets more of those little fiends in a space. They gain all sorts of odd powers. Make a basher's brains pour out his ears, they will. Downright frightening, it's just wrong, I tell you. That's why Sigil's so eager to be rid of him. The bounty and all. The bo uh, bounty? Someone pays for rat's tails? That's right, Cutter. There's a Burke in the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. Names... Oh, name a lot. Who pays a bounty on him? A copper a head. A uh, tailor is, eh? But they gotta be brain vermin, they do, not just ordinary rats. Okay. Tell me more about this lot, fellow. Is... Ah, oh, his name's Phineas. Phineas Lot. I think he was some sort of high up. Or eye up. He was. Put down by his rivals and stuck here in this arse end of sigil. The Burke sits in there all alone all night and day. Damn, it seems, waiting for folk to bring in tails and pay, paying them a bounty. Now the best part, poor Sod must be allergic to rats because he's always got the 
got a huge rash going. Oh, powers be praised, I ain't that fella. Put down? Any idea why that would happen? Well, he's right chatty. He is. He'll rattle his bone box for hours on, on just how smart he is and the like. May out that's got something to do with it. He shrugs. Perhaps I'll go speak with him. He touches your arm. I see you're leaving, Cutter. Uh, before you go, would you like a nice delicious rat? One for the road, you might say. Uh, no thanks. Dumb. Do not want to eat a rat, thank you. Hmm. Oh, here we are. Is this it? All right. <laughs> Three tails. The door is locked. You would need a key. Well, shit. I'm hoping this isn't a bad idea. Before I do it, I'm saving. Ooh, junk. Okay, so here's Phineas. Let's have a word. You see a squat man with rash-covered skin and several pustules covering his face. His clothes seem to mark him as some sort of an official, but they are dirty, wrinkled, and covered with rat hair. As you watch, he idly scratches himself with his stubby fingers. Greetings. <laughs> ah! The little man shrieks and jumps, startled. Clutching his heart, he takes a deep breath and pushes his spectacles upon his rash-ridden nose. Yes, yes. What is it I can do for you? He scratches his nose and looks you up and down, studying your scars. I, uh... I have little to nothing in the till, so if you have come to plunder the premises, this local is ill-chosen. I'm not here to plunder the premises. Who are you? I? I am the respected Phineas T, Lord of the 39th... <laughs> oh my god. In charge of this hive branch of the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. It is my distinguished privilege, he scratches his chest and puffs up, to inform you that we, in the bureaucratic sense of the word, we, meaning, the, meaning to encompass the sigil... Uh, bureaucracy as a whole are accepting bounties on all manner of vermin and strays that infest the he scratches again fair street of sigil hub of the multiverse and the city which sits at the center of all things this is the city by which all other cities are measured bounties Updated my journal yes yes we in the bureaucratic sense of the word oh right wait 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, meaning to encompass the sigil bureaucracy as a whole are accepting tangible proof of the eradication of brain vermin, aka cranium rats, from the hive area where they have clustered quite thickly for the past many years. As a recent census of the vermin population has shown, I am empowered by the sig so is that sigillian bureaucracy to pay a bounty of, he puffs up dramatically, one copper common per cranium rat delivered to my branch office. Cranium rat. Cranium rats are a species of, species of vermin that become more intelligent the more of them the more of them are in close proximity to each other. One cranium rat alone is but a nuisance that chews at boards and burrows into food, but five, ten or more, and their intelligence grows until it surpasses even the intelligence of one such as myself. Scratches, then sniffs disdainfully. I imagine that two or three cranium rats might be enough to outwit you, sir. Another comment like that and you'll be wearing your ass as a hat. Phineas, Phineas blinks, your appearance seems to sink in at last. Hmm, I withdraw my most inappropriate comment, especially in light of your recent assertion of dominance and physical superiority in this social situation. How many cranium rats are in sigil? More than enough to last a bounty hunter a lifetime, perhaps several. I have some other questions. Ah, oh, who are you? Oh, shit. Hang on, I want to talk to him again. I have some questions. How did someone as illustrious as you end up in such a place? Well, it is quite an epic tale, you see. I was born here in Sigil. Uh... Oh, shit. Oh, no. It literally took like, eight hours. Nice. And then I realised that I had somehow offended my colleagues. For I found myself promoted to this branch office and have remained here for, for these past many years. He sighs, then idly scratches his nose. <laughs> Yawn. Uh, what the questions? Tell me about these... Is that rash of yours contagious? A rash contagious? No, no, well at least I don't think so. It's a symptom of the position, I'm afraid. The job literally grows on you. He scratches himself again. Um, what about the cranium rats? So we've won... Yeah, how many are in sigil? Heard enough. So is this actually a thing? There and on. Oh! Wait, that's one I've not done. Find so go. So I go. Okay. Cranium rats. Unless, can I turn them in? Hold up. I have a bunch of tails. Oh, I could use what you have in your cash box. No, no, don't want to steal. Three tails at three coppers a rat. Ah, oh, bollocks. Of course, because it's night time. We're getting mugged. What weapon am I using? Fists? Oh my god, no wonder I was doing barely anything. Jesus. 
Nice. I'm gone. Indeed. Pretty, pretty cool. So have I done everything here? I think I've spoke to everybody. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, does, did Emmerich ever tell me where to find Sogo? I don't remember. I just want to sell some stuff, so I'll go back to this guy. So, yes, I have. I want to sell... Oh, really? That worked. Mort doesn't have anything. He has that. Oh, for ten of them, it's... So if I only sold one, is that four copper? Wait. Oh god, it is. It's 40 per. What does that do? Wait, this cranium rat tail is particularly filthy. So I do have them. When it's, yeah, consumed. I may as well sell it. I get loads of these, to be honest. I actually do. What the hell is this? I really hope this isn't... Okay, it, it probably was this guy. Oh, not this guy. Crap. Giscard, it was probably his. I see what you have. Can I sell him the rags? Oh man, I can't. That sucks. I can buy bandages, though. He only sells one. One of each. Yeesh. My god. Alright, I may as well get rid of the rag. Also, probably could get rid of this. The bone journal. Don't really need it anymore. Junk, I might as well give to... Alex. Might as well give to Mart, I was gonna say. I think that's all I want to get rid of. Alright, yeah, he is quite far. Right now I can give it to him. Hallelujah. Ew. Jerried. Uh, jerried. Jellied Hydra eyeballs. So, I still need to find... Sogo, but I don't know where... I can't even remember if Emmerich told me where to find him. What's it say in the journal? Dustman, who has undertaken missionary service for the faction and disappeared. This is all to join the Dustman as well, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. So go. So we go. Although, to be fair, I've looked around here and I don't see anybody. I don't, I've not seen, I've not come across any dustmen, is, uh, more what I'm meaning. Hmm. Also, it's night time. wonder if we'll get attacked by shadows. That's something that's yet to happen. Hmm. Oh, of course. Is it just the one? Oh no, all three of them. Of course. Take clock charm. Coffers. Oh nice, I got two clock charms from that. Collector. I'm also just looking around to see if I can see a name. So hyped out, blah blah blah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've spoke to all these, haven't I? Oh yeah, there was the, the like really small guy that tried to pilfer my pocket. Guess he's a dick. Right, so we can... <laughs> Wait, why can't I run up here? How bizarre. Whatever. I'll actually go and talk to this chick. Mm-hmm. Should tear this thing down. Man, we're actually making progress in Ragpicker Square. Right, uh, need purchase. Right, so I can get rid of this, get rid of this, and this, and this. Right, so sell those. More dirty rat charms. Wait a minute, what? Oh, she only sells them for... Oh. She only takes them for ten. I never sold them. Oh no, I thought I did. I still can't believe that I can't look at these. Wait, cranium. Oh. Oh, we need the cranium rat. Not it, just its tail, I'm guessing. Scroll of Remove Curse. A Rune of Lesser Warding. Oh, damn. Hmm. I really wish he had a, a charm of 
you know, identify. Thrice blind. Invokes blindness. Is that- I'm assuming that must be temporary. Yeah, okay. Corpse fight. They're really good. That, that was how I was able to defeat the, um, Necromancer so easily. Definitely. <laughs> ah, allows a cursed item to be successfully unequipped. Thankfully, we don't have any of that, so, uh, we're good. Yeah, so it would appear. So, we have... I don't think there's all that much to do in Ragpicker Square. There's a guy that's next to the boat. I'm gone. But aside from him, I don't think there's all that much. It's just a bunch of... Oh, wait, collectors that have names. That's Ratbone. I mean, I'll talk to Nod. I just realised he actually has a name. Hmm. So as you approach the hooded, brown-robed man, you notice that he's mumbling to himself softly, softly, and occasionally nodding. Greetings. So one comes to speak to Nod, speaks to Nod, I. He suddenly breaks into a fit of hacking coughs, then nods to himself. What are you doing? Nothing, except looking for deaders. Nothing else. He sniffs, then gives another hacking cough. He mumbles for a moment, then speaks again. Nothing else. No, nothing else. Need the jink. Jink, jink. Deaders? The man nods. Deaders. Can sell them to the dusties. You can sell the corpses? He starts nodding, without really looking at you. Haul him to the black, the black place, the mortuary. He tilts his head back and forth, then nods again. There, the dusties, they haggles and gives jink. They take the deader in, they do. Iron. Nod don't. Nod don't talks to him till the next body. He sniffs, wiping it at his nose with the back of his hand. Why do they pay for the corpses? He shrugs. No matter, no matter. He smiles and nods, uh, sagely? Sagly? Jink for me, jink jink. What is this place? He frowns and licks his lips. Rackpicker Square. The square, trash everywhere. Aye, everywhere. He coughs. What are you doing? Oh. So, uh, that's everything, I think? He nods. What? He sniffs and squints at you. Jink. He taps his head, points at you, then points at his hand. You want to know something? Jink. Aye. Jink, jink. Hemmed in a couple coins. Jink for nod, jink, jink. He mumbles for a moment, hiding the copper coins away in the fold of his robe. Ask. Nod tries to answer. Aye. He coughs for a bit, spitting something off to the side. Uh, okay. Tell me about Mebeth. Is that the... Like, um, the doctor lady? Yeah, tell me about the collectors. Me? Me? He seems unsure for a moment, then nods assent. Uh, assent. Me scoops up deaders, takes to Dusty's. Dusty's pay, jink for dead. Dead to their right place. Dead happy, Dusty's happy, not happy. I with nods, shiny jink. Tell me about this, not this area. Tell me about Mebeth. Midwife. Cures and charms. She help with the wee ones, nice. He wrinkles his nose, her place up on the platforms. Smell bad. Okay, do you know a man named Farad? He looks frightened and starts to shake his he head. Farad? 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 He scratches his head. What? What about him? He frowns and shakes his head as if... He is not sure he should be speaking to you. Do you know where I can find him? He shakes his head, then mumbles. He glances quickly at, the, at you, then begins to murmur again to himself. It sounds like he's uttering, an, uttering a prayer against evil. No, no, not here, in square. He frowns as if unsure how to explain it, but not in the square. He shakes his head again, then coughs. That's all I wish to know. Farewell. Eh? Uh, he shakes his head, coughs, and resumes his nodding. You'd ask... Wait, quest... Oh, I don't know. Ignore him, turn, and leave. Not here. Fucking ask him anything. Eh, so... so we've got collector, collector. 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 I'm just wondering if there's any other named people. Yeah, we got the Trashfield Archway, Trash Warrens, Midwife's Hut. Northwest portion of the hive. Fucking Jesus. Wait, what is over here? <gasps> what the what the who? Marrow friend. Okay. You can smell the reek of dung and rotting meat on this man, even from afar. Though obviously weak and decrepit, his long, thin fingers and sunken eyes give him a sinister look as he scuttles through the garbage around him. The way he draws and rolls his rolls his eyes makes you wonder if he's if he's mad. Greetings. He tries to focus on you, but his gaze wanders. His eyes are set deeply in hollow sockets, and his skin is terribly pale and diseased, covered with rashes and yellowed patches that look ready to peel from his body at any moment. The stench emanating from him is terrible. As you open your mouth to speak, he licks his lips and swallows. You deader? What did you say? You... <laughs> he licks his lips again, and his long spindly 
fingers pick at his skin as he stares at you. You deader. He glances to your left, then his eyes dart back to you. Dead? Dead? Hungry. He reaches out to touch you, licking his scabrous lips. Ew. Do I want to let him touch me? Hmm. Let him touch you. His fingers scrabble spider-like on your arm as if looking for a piece to tear off. He licks his sp split lips again. You watch yellowish drool drip from them. With a raspy moan, his fingers suddenly dig into the skin on your arm and pull a bit off. I'll pull off a bit. Step back. You watch and you feel your stomach churn as he takes the bit of flesh and shoves it into his mouth. Ugh. Shoves it into his mouth. He chews it slowly, then swallows. You dead? No, I'm not dead. You taste dead. He scratches himself beneath his robe. And you suddenly notice that he has a finger hanging from his neck on a cord. It looks like there's a ring on it. Still hungry. What do you usually eat? He makes a snuffling noise like a pig. Dead. What is that finger bone? Ooh. Okay, he looks down, his plague-ridden features twisting into a ghastly, snaggle-toothed parody of a grin. Snack, he looks ready to chew on it. Don't eat that, have a bite off me. Instead, I'm more fresh. He smiles and reaches for your outstretched hand. Oh god. Give me the finger bone first. Uh. Do I say first, or bite and then get the bone? Let him bite you. Oh there, now give me your finger. His teeth sink into the meat of your forearm and pull a chunk away with a single wrench of his n of his neck. The pain is excruciating, but my friend sits on his haunches as if nothing had happened. Chewing noisily at the mouthful of meat, he pulled away. Now give me your finger. He clutches the finger bone. Oh my god, really? He clutches the finger bone to his chest, looking up at you pitifully and shaking his head. No, hungry. I'll let you have another of mine if you'll give me the finger bone. He nods greedily and lets you take the finger bone. Let him bite you. Right there. Thanks. That didn't even take off all that much. Jeez. Like the, the, way, the way they made it sound, like, it was excruciatingly painful. It's like, it made it sound like it was doing 30 damage each time or something. So... Actually, wait. I want to have a look at the finger bone. Oh, it's actually a finger! Oh, uh, finger bone. I can use it. Oh god, it looks disgusting. This is a decayed and nearly meatless finger bone from a humanoid of roughly your size. There is still some sort of odd ring on the finger. It is an intricate thing, sculpted with dozens of tiny ornate uh, flanges and decorative protrusions. Oddly enough, it seems fairly rooted to the finger. Pardon me. And no amount of pulling or prying will budge the thing. Almost as if the ring's jagged edges have dug into the lifeless finger itself and refused to release it. Use. This is a well-decayed and nearly meatless finger bone from the humanoid of roughly your size. Right, yeah. Pull the ring from the finger, put the finger bone away. Pull the ring from the finger. Mm-hmm. Try as you might. Oh! Oh god, I'm doing this again. You cannot remove the ring. It's almost as if the ring's sharp edges have dug into the lifeless finger itself and refused to release it. You have an odd feeling about it, however. Remove your own finger, replace it with the finger bone. Oh god. You place the ring finger on... Wait. You place the ring finger of your left hand into your mouth. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Oh god. Bite down as hard as you can. There is a sickening crunch as you are overcome with the taste and smell of blood. You spit the bloody finger out and place the rotted ring-laden finger bone against the gushing stump. Ugh. Oh, that's gross. At first nothing happens and you are horrified at the thought of what you have just done. Suddenly, though, you feel a strange tingling sensation as bones fuse and tendons re-knit. In moments, the rotting finger has become a living part of your body. Though it still throbs painfully, the jagged ring suddenly loosens and slips off into the palm of your hand. Done. Yay! I got a ring. Memper's Biting Ring. Plus... Ooh! It's cursed. Oh dear. Memper was a mage... obsessed with the possibility of having her magic items lost or burgled while she was asleep or otherwise incapacitated. While the vast majority of of her carried possessions were inseparable from her corpse and thus buried with her, some of her weaker items' early experiments perhaps were left behind and remain in the world of, of the once living, or of the living even. Memphis Biting Ring, whose powerful aura protects its bearer from bodily harm, is one such item. However, once placed upon one's finger, the ring bites down and holds on so tenaciously 
but it is now impossible to remove it from the bitten digit. Oh, go for it. Item cursed! Oh no! If I want to get rid of it, I'm pretty sure I can just get rid of it. So that only also only took like 4 HP. Not bad, really. Yeah, if I want to get rid of a curse, I'm assuming I can just do this. Talk to Mebeth. Came here to purchase charms, and if I go to aid, I could remove the curse. Yeah, there we go. See, if I need to. So if I just do this... Right, can I rest here? Thank you! Boom, full health. Rested for 8 hours. It is now 6am. Perfect. Right, quick save. And that is going to be the end of this session. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed. And until next time, take care. Whoa.